Hi, this is David. This video is going to be about putting this key, uh, it's a Toyota ignition key, back together again. Somebody over torqued it. It just kind of forced the key when it was stuck a little bit in the ignition. And um, I was a little surprised at how fragile this thing is, you know, that's put together, the way it's put together. Um, here I am just taking it apart, uh, looking it over for the first time. You can see where the plastic bent broke there that ho where it holds the metal portion of the key and how small the overlap is there between the metal portion and the plastic. Okay, I'm going to just take the buttons out of here too now, the, the remote access buttons here, the door lock and such, and uh, so it's going to be a little bit easier to work on this thing. And um, I'm, I'm going to try, this is a $350 key, now that's what the replacement cost is, and that's the reason why I'm going to some lengths here to fix this, because I really don't want to, you know, have to spend $350 for another fragile key. I'm trying to shoehorn a, a jeweler's screwdriver in there in order to get the keys to seat back um, in the slot where it was supposed to be, the metal part of the key. And um, this took some jimmying, some doing here. And um, I finally will get it to where it seats back in there. And, um, and we're going to go step by step trying to fix this. You're trying to do it the easiest possible way. So this is kind of a little saga here of, of how I went about this. A little super glue in there. This is my first attempt seem to do work real well. Let's try this one. Okay, that seemed to be pretty good there. Okay, so this should be dry now. Take off this clamp. The test I'm going to do on this is I'm giving a twisting motion to this the way you would if you were going to uh, put the key in the ignition. Okay, round three. Came apart again. This is actually the third time. Um, what we're going to do this time is uh, put more glue in more places. It held, held up for three or four days and then slipped apart again. What I'm going to do now is put glue down in here, basically on the underside and overside and above on this key here and um, just have more contact surfaces to help us out. we got some new glue. Not sure that what we had before um, is still any good. Okay, so this time we're going to put some underneath here. There's one under there. I'm going to put some on top of the key here too. Slip the key in, the metal part back in there. Twist it into position. And I'm going to put one more dab. I did this the second time too. Put it in here. Okay, now we're going to clamp it together. Let this sit a while. I have a feeling this time it'll hold up. Okay, so here we are again. It came apart again. Um, the torques on this are, are greater than what I anticipated. So what I've decided to do is slip this back in here. And I'm going to drill a, a number 6 hole in here. Or a 9 32nd inch hole. And put a 6, a number 6 screw in there. Uh, and run it through. Try to make it as unobtrusive as possible. So what I'm going to do is just mark this with an automatic punch right smack in the middle, which is also going to be right in the middle of the key. And we'll drill it right there. Okay, I'm right to the metal now. Now I can take it out. Made a mark on it there. I can drill through the rest of this. There we are, right through it. I'm pretty much dead center. So now we'll just drill through the metal. So when drilling out the, the stock like this, the key stock, make sure you have sharp bits so your hole um, is true, stays centered. Very important. Okay, what I decided to do then, I drilled through both of these. And I've got a six size six screw to put in here. Run it all the way through. And we'll put a washer and a lock washer on there. 
clip this off, put an acorn nut in, uh, on this side. What I'm going to do is uh, hone this out in here so that the head of the screw will fit under there hopefully. The other option that I have here is to flatten that screw head. It doesn't need to be as big as it is. We can have it hidden underneath there. This is what I've got a couple of, of nuts here. I've got them uh, butted up against each other and so it won't turn. And then I'm just going to get a cutting wheel, a little rotary cutting wheel, and cut that off really clean right as a nut. Okay, there it is nice and clean to our custom length. Okay, so I'm using a grinder now in order to uh, thin out the head of the screw because I want the, the uh, case to be able to snap back over the top. So thin it out a little bit. And I also use this to uh, taper uh, a bushing and washers that I used on the other side, kind of to make all this hardware fit together and, and work. Just want assembling this. First goes our screw through from the inside. On the other side, got tapered tapered um, nylon washer. I've got a mark so I get the tape around the top. I've got a little, see a little dark mark on there. So we need to keep that up. Then I've got a metal tapered one just to add a little bit more to it. Again, keeping it up. Then comes the lock washer. And then the acorn nut. Or again, like I said, you could use a standard, standard nut as well. You can see the side view on my tapers are making up for the for the angle on this key, and then we just uh, tighten it all up. Flatten out the washer, the lock washer. So the chip is actually embedded right here. Let's go test this out. All right, let's check this out. Okay, I think we're going to be all right. All right, then we're just going to put all the buttons back on. And goes on this little pad. Like that. Goes in like this. And then we simply snap our cover back on. All right. Okay, well it's all set then. It took about four tries to get this thing right. A little bit of an adventure here. Hope you enjoyed the video. You know, this, this is a way to fix things, especially things that cost 350 bucks are way overpriced. And um, yet we still need them. Thanks for watching.